DNA sequencing? Generally, there are three methods of DNA sequencing. First is Maxim Gilbert method. Second is Sanger's didioxy method. Sanger's didioxy method of auto, of DNA sequencing and third is automated DNA sequencing. So, discussing these methods in detail, first of all we will discuss about Maxim Gilbert method. This method is also known as chain degradation method. This method is uh, not generally used nowadays. Nowadays generally we use Sanger's uh, method of DNA sequencing, but Maxim Gilbert method was used previously. The steps involved in this method are as follows. Suppose this is the DNA which is to be labeled, so sorry which is to be sequenced. Okay, this is 3 prime and 5 prime and Now, for sequencing this DNA, we will choose uh, any one of the end for its labeling. Suppose we have chosen its 3 prime end for labeling. So, we label its 3 prime end. for labeling. So, at the 3 prime end of both the stand, strands, radioactively labeled dye is added. Now, denaturation, the strands are separated and we get a single stranded DNA. Now, this sample is divided into 4 tubes and in each of the tube different chemicals are added in uh, in limited amount. Destroys only at A, destroys at A and G. destroys at T and C and destroys at T only. So, these are the 4 tubes, each tube contains the denatured DNA which is labeled at its 3 prime end and the chemicals which have of degrading the DNA chain at a specific basis. Now, after uh, the incubation of these chemicals with the DNA, then we electrophores the sample in electrophoresis gel uh, like sequencing gels because these gels are uh, have very fine pores and they have the capacity of differentiating of even a single nucleotide. So, 
then a gel is run. Each lane of the gel contains the sample from each tube. So, like the t a sample of first tube, they are loaded in lane 1, sample of second in 2 and respectively. Now, after electrophoresis, we get a banding pattern. What kind of a banding pattern it will be? Let us see. So, this is a kind of a banding pattern which is observed after electrophoresis. Now, we have to read the gel, the, so, so that we can get the sequence. We are getting in this, uh, in the lowermost part, this is the shortest fragment which we get after electrophoresis and on the upper side of the gel, we used to get longer fragments, because the, the fragments they move in the gel according to their molecular weight. So, these are the fragments with least molecular weight. Now, we are getting in the lowermost side of the gel, we are getting bands in, in two lanes, third and fourth. Now, in third and fourth, we have T in common. T is present in both uh, the samples of third tube and in fourth tube. So, here we will write T, then we are getting bands in both first and second lane and in both the lanes what is common is A. So, it is A, then uh, in this lane we have A and G, but we cannot write A because if A would have been present then would we would have got the band in this lane also. So, here we will write G, G, then C, then T, then A, then G, then C and then T and this will be the 3 prime end and this will be the 5 prime end because we labeled the DNA at its 3 prime end. So, the shortest fragment after degradation will be represented as its 3 prime end and this is the sequence of the DNA which we want to sequence. So, this was the Maxim Gilbert method in which we were degrading the chain with different chemicals and uh, the after electrophoresis we were getting the bands and depending on which end was labeled we have sequenced the gel. Second method and most commonly used method nowadays is Sanger's dideoxy method. So, second method is Sanger's dideoxy method. This method is also called as chain termination method. The basic principle in this method is the use of dideoxy nucleotides. When we are talking about DNA, we used to talk about deoxynucleotides. What are deoxynucleotides? Those nucleotides which do not have oxygen at 2 prime position of the pentose sugar and dideoxynucleotides, they are the sugars which do not have oxygen atom at 2 prime and 3 prime position. This is the structure of a dideoxynucleotide. So, we can here we can see that at 2 prime carbon, second carbon and third carbon at both the carbons, there is absence of oxygen. So, this is a structure of a dideoxy 
nucleotide. So, this is the basic principle of the whole technique. What are the steps which are involved? And, and this is the most commonly used method nowadays for sequencing of DNA sequence of DNA nucleotides. The steps involved are suppose this is the DNA which we want to sequence. This is the DNA which we want to sequence. So, we so we have to add a primer A T A A. This is the primer sequence. And this and from here we do not know the sequence of the DNA. Till here we know the sequence. So, till here where, where, whose sequence is known with that fragment is used for designing of a primer and after the primer region the sequence of DNA is unknown to us. So, for sequencing we carry out PCR reactions and in tube we add DNA polymerase plus 99 percent DNTPs plus 1 percent DDNTPs which are radio labeled. So, again we take 5 4 tubes And in each tube, we take different DDNTP. These DDNTPs are radio labeled. Okay, so, in each tube, we have a DNA sample which is to be sequenced, a primer, DNA polymerase, DNTPs and DDNTPs. DNTPs are simple uh, deoxy uh, nucleotide uh, nucleoside triphosphates like DATP, DGTP, DCTP and DTTP. They are included in DNTPs. Now, what will happen that uh, using this primer this DNA polymerase will start synthesizing the complementary strand. Now, suppose for example, we consider this tube, what will happen in this tube? This is the DNA which we wanted to sequence. And this was the primer. Now, synthesis G, C, G. Now, complementary to T, A has to be incorporated. So, it may happen, it may happen or it may not happen that at this place DDA is on incorporated. If DDA is incorporated at this place complementary to T, then the chain synthesis will terminate here and uh, no more further addition of nucleotides will take place. Uh, exactly same will happen in these three tubes also. Like if, if we if we are talking about this tube, then T has to be incorporated at this place and at this place. So, in one of the chain T will be incorporated here and sometimes it may happen that at this place T DDT will be incorporated here. So, at some places chain will terminate here and at some places chain will terminate here in case of DDT. Now, 
we will allow the reaction to proceed and after the reaction is completed the sample which is synthesized in the tubes it is denatured and then electrophoresed. Again electrophoresis is done on sequencing gel like page again the same reason that uh, because these gels are very fine they are called as sequencing gels because the difference of even a single nucleotide can be detected in these gels. Again the sample of these four tubes are loaded in four different lanes of the gel. Now what will be the banding pattern? This will be the banding pattern again the shorter fragment will be at the bottom of the gel and the longer fragment will be on the top of the gel. Now the how to read the gel? In this case there is no uh, repetition of bases each lane contains a single DD, uh, uh, dideoxynucleotide. So, depending on which lane you are reading we can write like in this in this case the band which is present at the lowermost part of the gel is present in fourth lane and in fourth lane we loaded the sample of fourth tube which contain which contained dideoxy uh, cytidine so we will read it as c g a t t c g G. And in this case we what we are observing as the sequence has been synthesized the synthesis always takes place in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, here the shortest fragment will be the 5 prime end of the DNA. So, this will be the 5 prime end and this will be the 3 prime end and the sequence which is obtained finally after electrophoresis is the sequence of the DNA uh, complementary uh, to the DNA which is to be sequenced. So, after getting this sequence we can identify the sequence of the original DNA which we want it to be sequenced and because we are using radio labeling. So, the results are generally observed by auto radiography. Third method is automated method of DNA sequencing. The basic principle of automated method of DNA sequencing is same that is in this case also we use dideoxynucleotides, but there are Ma uh, few major differences. First difference in automated method is difference relatively to Sanger's method. First difference is that in case of automated DNA sequencing we do not use radio labeling we use fluorochromes. That is fluorescent labeling is used in this case. And if we label different uh, dideoxynucleotides with different fluorescent dyes, then uh, we uh, do not need to run the gel in four lanes. So, this is the second difference that a single track system single track system means 
that is a reaction in single tube and then the running of gel in a single lane. can be done in automated method of DNA sequencing and uh, the uh, when the gel is run, we do not need to read the gel manually. The signals uh, uh, when the laser light falls on the gel, the signals uh, uh, emitted uh, from fluorescent uh, dyes, they are received by the detector and the detector they transfer the signal to computer. Detector transfer the signals to computer and the computer generates the sequence. This part is of automated DNA sequencing. So, the basic principle is of uh, Sanger's method and uh, we use fluorescent dyes the laser light falls on these fluorescent dyes, then the fluorescent signal is emitted. This fluorescent signal is received by a detector, the detector transfers the signals to the computer, the computer it reads the gel and it gives us the sequence. So, we do not need to read the gel manually. Thank you.